made it. Seconds to spare. Made it. <laughs> Chaos here. Made it with seconds to spare. What a runner on. What a runner on. Ah, uh, good morning, everybody. Oh, whatever. It it doesn't look like it's raining. It's at the moment it's just dripping, but it's on and off. Like five minutes ago, just as I came out of the pool, it was it's Pakistan monsoon. It just fell out of the sky. We'll see it again. It's coming and going, coming and going every few minutes. Crazy rain this morning. Absolutely crazy rain. Last night, too. <laughs> Last night, I looked at the tree after I finished up in the shop here. I looked at the tree outside. It was really dry. All the leaves are wilted and hanging. I thought, how I saw. So I went upstairs, got a bucket, came down, went to the back, and I carefully watered the tree outside. You can't see it here. It's the one to the left of the camera. Yeah, right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pissing down today. I have to move the camera at the moment is pulled back into the alcove. I can't leave it out where it normally is. It normally sits just at the edge of the alcove looking down the street, but I can't leave it there today. And in fact, even as it is, I pulled it in. But if it starts up again like it was a few minutes ago, whoosh, I'll have to get out there and pull it back. Now I went to the pool this morning for the first time in two and a half weeks. We were on, remember, we were on lockdown here because of the virus for a week, and then just when I was ready to go back to the pool, I pulled my back out. That was, what, 10 days ago. Got to the pool today for the first time. Very careful, very slow. I couldn't get out at the end. <laughs> I had to duck under the line over to the place where they've got the stairs for the old folks and I came out of the pool on the steps. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, you know what we're doing? We're actually, we will we finish the key blog this morning. I have been doing this really in a sensible way. I've been carving an hour or two hours a day then leaving it rather than trying to uh, trying to do too much. So we're going to see the finish off of this key block this morning. And actually, I haven't really prepared it, but we could. If I actually get this done here, we may see the first uh, test proofing. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Last night, I did the persuading so that we wouldn't have to do it on stream, the noisy persuading. Paper is out for one person a day, Chan. She's doing a batch of the owls, because we're coming up to that season. It's you know, summertime. As I mentioned on Instagram, Ayanosan mentioned yesterday on Instagram, uh, we are now all hands on deck preparing for, preparing for the gift season. If we don't prepare now, it'll overwhelm us in September and October and November. Okay, okay, okay. I'm feeling better, but I'm still, I'm just, I have the feeling that this is going to click any minute and just could get thrown out again. I don't know. Just have to be really, really, really careful. Okay, thank you, everybody. Let's do, as I said, I did the persuading, and the outside lines are already cut. You saw me cut those already. So my job today now is to get close to the outside lines, uh, pull away the uh, unneeded boxwood, and trim away, uh, smooth out the outside. This little guest, it's a mite. Can you see him? Come on, oh, come on, out, 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 I won't hurt you. I guess this is food for the little jumping spiders. Mites, they're everywhere, summertime. Okay, let's have a look at this. This is the part of the job that back when I was a beginner was the, this was my uh, Achilles heel, is that the expression? Here's where I smacked it up. I had cut my lines, I had cleared my stuff outside, but clearing up to the line.
clearing up to the line is where I would uh, screw it up. Ending up with broken lines, chipped lines, pieces missing. Today, hopefully, we're not going to uh, be in that situation, but I still do need a close up. I gotta get closer. I still can't see. Do it, I guess, right? Come around here. Okay, let's get some work done. These lines are cut, but they're not cut deeply enough. They're sort of semi-scratched. But now that so much of the waste wood is gone, we can now cut deeper without too much risk of actually breaking the line. Because as I push the knife into the wood now, you can see the, the waste wood is now free to move away. So the stress left on the line is, uh, is hopefully insignificant. And this is the part that I didn't get back in the early days. I would push my knife deep here, stressing both sides, and it would push the line. forced a bit deeper and the waste wood loose. It should be it should be safe to go back in the water here. Nice, good, clean. Hi. Anywhere on Dave's back, it's still here. Very careful, being very, very, very careful. Bit by bit by bit better. Did I read the AMA chat? No, I haven't. I'm sorry. <laughs> not from lack of interest. I'm sorry. Not from lack of interest. Just from. Just from stuff. You know, there is still so much going on here now. We're moving into high gear, you know. You, some people out there like may still be on summer holidays or they may have summer holidays or vacations or whatever, I don't know. We are one of those types of businesses that August for us 
is where we shift into first gear, second gear, third gear, coming up to the busy season. We're not doing much shipping here at all. Ayanosan and Watanabe-san are taking care of the daily orders and getting them shipped. But most of our time right now is spent on preparing for September, October, November. The printers are working full speed ahead printing stuff. The rest of us are getting our systems in place, preparing the next newsletter, deciding on the campaign, how we're going to run this, which prints are going to be the gift prints this year. Now, it's not quite like Santa Claus's workshop running here now, but it, that's the way it works, you know. August. Ayam-san, yesterday she came to me and together we worked out a plan for her work for the next few days. And there's something that needs doing that both she and I have been postponing for a while. Uh, inside our, our management and control system, there's a flow. Orders come in, they go into the box for the shippers, the shippers ship them, they beep the barcodes, they go out. Orders flow through and sort of disappear from our system. But there are a bunch of glitch orders. Something happens, you know, that it doesn't go through smoothly. And it's rare, rare, rare. It's one in every few hundred something happens. The person probably along may cancel their order or it turns out that uh, we can't deliver it, or, or it went to the post office and it's over there and it says it's been delivered, but the person hasn't got it. You know, whatever, orders that have some kind of problem. And she's got her problem box, and the past few months we have sort of been ignoring it. But now, coming up to September, October, November, both she and I know that we can no longer ignore that problem box. And she has to get in there and go through them one by one figure out what to do, how to solve this problem, maybe write to the customer, we don't know what's going on. And that's been her job for the past few days and for the next few days. And some of these problems date back to, uh, to Cameron's day. That's how, that's how long it's been since this box was thoroughly cleaned out. So. so she's not actually having any fun with this, but she's gaining a lot of experience. Get me some of that wholesome crunch. <sighs> I 
Someone's like, well, Cameron, Cameron didn't move. I know I hear from him occasionally, <laughs> but usually I don't hear from Cameron. He doesn't bother me. But I wrote to Cameron the other day, for example, I needed to find a certain thing here, and I couldn't find it. And I thought, Cameron will know where that is. So, so, so I wrote to Cameron and asked him, do you have that picture, such and such and such and such? I can't find it anywhere. Where is it in the files? You know. And he, uh, he wrote back, and not only he told me where it is, he still got a copy of it, so he sent it over. So thanks very much, Cameron. Apparently things are going with him. He's got a, he's got a job, happy job. He's got a, a house in the, mid, the Midwest. You know, family life, house with a big yard, school nearby and all that kind of stuff. Cameron is now living the, the you know, m middle class life over in America. Got a job and a family and a church group and, you know, all that sort of stuff. As far as I can tell, things seem to be going very well. I guess he's happy to be back near, near his more extended family. I'm sure his uh, extended family is much more happy to, uh, to have him nearby, you know. So yeah, so I think I can report that. All seems to be well with Cameron, as far as I know. Oop, Dave, don't get in that line. Look at that. Nearly notched into the line there. Wrong way. Okay, we've worked our way around one of these. Four left. No, Cameron, he's from the Midwest. Cameron went back to Virginia when he left here because that was where his wife's parents were. They were staying with his wife's parents for a while, but now they've set up an independent life, and they're they're in the Midwest somewhere. He really wouldn't want me to chat too much about his personal life here, but uh, they're in the Midwest. His his family is Midwest. Her family is on the Eastern Seaboard, so they're somewhere in between the two, so they can see both families. So he's in the Midwest somewhere. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> It's extremely humid here this morning. My shirt is already stuck to my back. It's not that it's super hot, but that it's super, super moist or humid. Or like in a cloud, it's, it's a monsoon thing. I guess there's not a typhoon, but a, a really a low pressure rain system out there somewhere. Maybe a typhoon coming, I don't know. And it's just, it's like the humidity is 100%. It's just soaking, everything is soaking. If I were trying to print today, if I were one of the printers upstairs, you, you actually, you can take a piece of washi on a day like this. If it's not too thick, you can take a piece of thin washi like the, you would make with an ukiyo-e print. And you can print with it, because the paper has so much uh, inherent moisture in it just from the air. So it's printable. 
absolutely printable. I mean, they still do moisten their paper. They keep control of it, but uh, the paper itself, if you just leave a piece of paper sitting out, it just picks up moisture like crazy. It's a day like this, if I were doing color transfers, you gotta be really, really careful because the paper you're using to do your transfer can pick up so much moisture from the air, it expands, and you can really be in trouble. It's really a critical consideration. You know, for an extreme example, if I was doing color separations, and like, like we're going to do this afternoon and tomorrow, if I took some printings from this block today and then worked out my red colors and stuff, then pasted them down tomorrow, and if it, the rain had stopped tomorrow, I could really be in trouble. It's not good weather for this kind of work. The ideal weather for us would just be winter, winter, winter. Completely dry, basically no moisture in the air. We control the paper ourselves to the moisture level that we need. And the workshop would just be dry and clean. Very little danger of stuff getting moldy. For us, winter is the season, absolutely. And in the old days, actually, that's the way it used to go. Because although there were professional printers who did woodblock printing all year long, there were huge, huge numbers, and we're talking thousands of people, huge numbers of seasonal printers. And these were, uh, we're talking about the Edo era now, the 1700s, early 1800s. These were seasonal workers from up north. I know once the snows hit up in the Tohoku region, up in Sendai and Akita Prefecture and up there, once the snow hit, that's it. All your farm workers are just sitting there on their thumbs. And it was a common thing for laborers, seasonal laborers, to migrate down to the big city once the uh, farming had locked up. And working as a printer, printing books mostly, was easy. You can get trained in a few minutes. 10, 15 minutes training is all you need to be able to print those black ukiyo-e books. Bang, and away you go. So we read about this, that uh, a lot of publication dates, and they can tell from, uh, from the publication dates because there was strict control over what was published and when and stuff had to be dated. They look at the publication dates and huge amounts of stuff were published at that season, you know, through, through uh, the, the winter season. So I would presume carvers would work all year here in Tokyo. You don't be a carver, uh, you don't be a seasonal labor to be a carver, obviously. And stack up the blocks all year long, and then the seasonal lab workers come in and print up the books. Somebody wants a job printing sumo banske. <laughs> so I'm trying to get a couple of good examples, you know. We haven't got some in the collection. They come up on Yahoo Auction all the time, every day, any given day, there's a bunch of sumo banske on Yahoo Auction. And they are either one of two things. They are either too damaged, wormy, full of holes and falling apart because they've been displayed so much, or they are grossly expensive because it's not just woodblock aficionados who want those things. It's people who are sumo fans. Lots of sumo fans want those things to frame and put on their wall. So they are expensive. Good, nice ones are expensive. I just, I'm waiting, biding my time. One day I'll get a couple. <laughs> There was one I nearly bid on the other day on Yahoo Auction. It wasn't a sumo banske, it was a parody banske. It was a, it was geisha, geisha something something banske. And somebody had published this thing ranking all the geisha of the day, that date and that time. 
and putting them into an East group and a West group and uh, ranking their, their skill set. I don't know what skill set is involved, but uh, don't go there, Dave. I don't know. And uh, whatever to speak in super general terms, the Japanese, the Japanese really do love their rankings. Uh, maybe not just Japanese, it's people, I don't know, but uh, it's a thing here very much, especially TV shows and, and you name it, and uh, guidebooks to tourist places, university guides, you know, whatever. Uh, the Japanese love their rankings and always have done. That might be something that goes with a consensus society. You know, you don't want to be the, the odd man out. You want to be unhappy they're doing what most other people are doing. So having these rankings available tell you what's in and what's out. And uh, I guess it's humans, not, I keep saying Japanese, but uh, whatever people know. Well, someone's saying overlap the colors as a hedge against paper expansion. It doesn't help us because the paper, it's like the, the universe, it's this, this you know, expansion of the universe they're talking about. It's not just expanding at the end. All over it is expanding. So you can't, you know, if this was expanding, there would be 0.1 millimeter in the middle, 0.x millimeter at the edge, 0. millimeter at the edge. So it's not just a question of moving the lines. list there was a few things I was supposed to chat about today one of them was there's been another tiny movement in the uh, thing about the tourists you've seen it probably maybe you've already been talking about in the chat or I didn't notice it the, uh, the requirement about tour guides are be starting now to be relaxed I think there are still no individual tourist visas being issued if I understood the changes from Wednesday correctly it's still only group tours. You have to be book your tour through a group. But I believe, if I understand it correctly, you don't actually have to be with your tour guide all the time. I think this is what's been relaxed. Perhaps John and his uh, knowledge of the tourism situation here through his, his internet groups maybe knows a bit more. I don't know. There's been another tiny little shuffle step in the long, slow walk towards opening up Japan again. But still, as I, if I understood it correctly yesterday, still no individual tourist visas, I believe. Got to book through a tour group, but maybe you don't actually have to stay with the tour group. They're acknowledging that that's the reality on the ground. I think that's what the change on Wednesday was. You still have to have your itinerary arranged by an agent and you have to stick to that itinerary. Okay, I can guess that, but I think the change is then that you don't have to actually be with the tourists. It would be with the here it says. It says the the guided tours only requirement for foreign tourists is being abolished as of September 7th. The guided tours only requirement. But tourists will still be required to be visiting Japan as part of a package tour. 
a package tour consisting of predetermined hotel accommodations, transportation, and sightseeing itinerary. I don't know. I don't know. I think the deal is we know what's happening. It's a slow, slow, slow walk. So they're trying to make it look like, you know, we're getting there, but actually nothing is actually really changing. I don't know. The other thing it said is they're raising the, the level for the tourist group from 20,000 a month to 50,000 a month. But last month, there was only like 2,000 came in into that group anyway. <laughs> so that's meaningless. It's a master class in slow walking. My god. Why am I laughing? I don't know. Also, to be fair to those guys, part of it is to, if, if you know, just for example, if they did make some announcement, okay, we're okay, starting next week, we're going back to the way we were, no restrictions, visas, okay. If they did it that way, I think it would be chaos. The airlines would be overwhelmed, the immigration people would be overwhelmed, the hotels in one week would have tried to get back together. So I think really what they're doing here is partly procrastination, it's partly indecision, and it's partly a little bit common sense. Just do this bit by bit by bit by bit by bit so there's been no, uh, so there won't be any tragedy, any crash, you know. For me here, my own selfish little viewpoint, <laughs> what I don't want to deal with is the upcoming gift season, and then on top of that, a sudden announcement for the government, we're good to go, starting next week, you know. And I gotta then really get the shop up and running. And if this was all happening in October, November, my God, and this is this is for me the worst case scenario. Here the rain, right? It's coming in, it bursts. There was a burst of rain then, then nothing, then another burst of rain. Also, too, they've seen what's happened at airports around the world. I mean, the chaos that's happened in Canadian airports over, over this past summer. Because, like, all the people that were laid off and fired and thrown away during the pandemic, and then suddenly, bang, they did a sudden reopening. And, of course, it's been chaos, everything. Lost baggage. You, you just, you name it. There's been horror stories all summer long from places like that. Demand for coming to Japan is, oh my god, I cannot imagine. Okay, there's one, two done. Didn't ship anything yet, but I have a problem here. Coming up with this next one. Do you see this? arrow. What does this mean? What this means is when I was cutting the inside of this one, chop, chop, chop cut, 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 coming here, cutting the inside, I thought that I detected a wiggle here. When I was cutting this line to remove the wood here, I thought I detected motion. This little piece of wood here might be loose. If I just went ahead and just kept going and kept going, kept going, I would now be coming back to this a week later. I wouldn't remember that, and I'd just come here and slash here, and maybe this little piece here is maybe ready to break. It may be already loose. Now, it does break off. We fix it, but that's a, you know, a bunch of work I really would like to avoid doing. So step one, I have been warned. Step two, I'm now going to cut the outside very carefully. 
And step three, if I do detect some little bit of wiggle under there, it's not safe to leave it for the printers, because when the printers are coming with their brushes, bang, 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 oops, it's gone, and it's on the floor. So I am going to, if I detect any wiggle there, I'm gonna slip a little bit of glue under that to help, uh, to help hold it in place. If we do lose it, no problem, we fix it, but I really would like to avoid that, of course. So we'll see. So I, I dropped myself that little memo of, uh, last week when I was cutting this. Duct tape, yeah, right, 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 right. Well, someone says, why not just put glue in there now? I put glue in where? I mean, there's no hole, there's no place, there's no crack. It's, it's a solid piece of wood. If it does start to move, after I've cut the outside off, if it starts to move, I will jimmy it up a little bit, put some glue in there and squeeze it back down. But at the moment, there's no place to put glue because there's no opening. It's just a warning. Maybe nothing will happen here, but just whatever. So I can't glue it in advance because there's no hole there to, to put glue in. Didn't detect any motion there, but uh, let's see how she goes here. to remember this. I didn't detect anything. Let's just go back and play with this for a minute here. It is moving. Do you see that? There's a tiny, tiny, tiny little wiggle here. There it is. Look, it is. It's not down there. It's up here. Look, 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 look. This top part. Can you see it? It's wiggling. So there is a crack in there.
wiggle, 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 suck some glue in there. Okay. Okay, if all has gone well, a little tiny bit of glue has been sucked into there and we're good to go. It's possible that it's still weak as the printers are doing this, bang, 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 bang. They may report to me, Dave, I've lost a bit of the key block. If that's the case, we'll have a go. the last time we did an actual repair on this string. I really don't break stuff much these days, you know. It's because I don't carve much these days. But, uh, when's the last time we did a repair on string? I think the Patreon prints a few years back. A couple of years back, the Patreon, I chipped it or something, or I made a mistake in carving and had to put an insert in. We did that on stream, I think. Also, somewhere this month, I guess we've passed it now, I didn't pay much attention to it, but uh, August is when we started streaming. Hands up all of those of you who know how many years ago that was. I started streaming, 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 same difference, I started streaming in August. What year was that? And at the beginning, I did it twice a day, morning and afternoon, six days a week. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about insanity. <laughs> I've got them on, ta on tape. I've got them on disc. We, I record them all. They're all recorded here. But, uh, the first ones from August. Yeah, you, somebody's got it. 2017. It was 2017. The same year. Two, two major things happened. You know, there was a huge change in my personal life and requiring the hiring of somebody else. So we went to Patreon, set that up, and hired Cameron because there had been a rather major personal change in my life in the spring of 2017. So, uh, so yeah, 2017. So it's five years, 1914. Thanks, guys, yeah. It's five years. Twice a day, six times, twice. Once in the morning and once in the afternoon around five o'clock. Because I was really worried about the European time and, and, and North American time and stuff. And I was trying to be a good boy and I was trying to serve both markets. So the morning stream, I was thinking, well, people in the, the North America can see that, but Europeans have gone to bed. I can't help them. So I tried by having two streams a day, one in the afternoon about five o'clock. But... But, but, you know, I mean, life, life, common sense, you know, it's all very well to try and uh, do this, but it was completely, completely not possible to keep that up.
we that's three out of five. Two more to go. I think we're okay. What time is it? Yeah, we're good to go. Keep moving. Keep moving. Rewatch an old stream with live commentary. It will be funny, you know. I haven't seen him in years. I haven't gone back to rewatch. The first ones are probably like, hello, Dave Bull here, live. Hello, ho, is anybody there? I don't remember what we did. <laughs> I didn't, what we made. You know. <laughs> How close the magnifying glass is for Dave. Well, you can see it, it's right there. There's the block. Here's how it works. That's the setup. This is, it's, it's, an, it's not a microscope like for, for looking at viruses and stuff. It's a microscope that they use to like inspect circuit boards and things like this. It's not all that expensive. It's not an electron microscope. I don't know what it's called. A st it's a stereos stereoscope or stereoscopic microscope. <laughs> Now, actually, John's right. We were streaming before Twitch. Okay, I, I wasn't trying to avoid that or think about that. There was. The streaming, I guess, goes back about 10 years ago, but it wasn't the kind of streaming we see now. Chatting and feedback and chatting and feedback. I streamed by running the webcam with a fairly fast frame rate at first. So the first streaming we did was like a webcam picture that changed every five seconds or something like this. John will have seen those back in the old days. Then a company called Ustream came up and they were they were free at that time, so we did it with Ustream on my old cable connection. And I can't remember, I think we did it with, I had Skype open, so people like John were watching could speak to me via Skype, and they saw the silent stream on Ustream, I believe. Then Ustream started charging, and they wanted a penny per viewer per minute, and that added up real, real, real fast. So, out that went. Yeah, penny per viewer per minute was the bill. They didn't send me a bill first, they sent a notice starting next week or next month or whatever. We're moving to a, to a paid model. And that was that. Uh, even if we had like just 10 people, a penny per viewer per minute didn't, didn't, uh, didn't gel, you know? We have a nice present here.
the delivery guys, the tacky bin guys, you know, they're nice guys, they work hard. My God, their life, though, my God. He's delivering here now, and it's now just, uh, just uh, coming up to nine. So, of course, the truck came to their depot, you tell me, an hour ago, hour and a half, two hours ago. They've had the stuff unloaded off the truck, put it in their baskets, guy A, route man B, route man C. So he's been here at least an hour. He must have started work at like eight o'clock or maybe earlier. And this is the same guy who picks up here in the evening. He comes to the hotel around six o'clock to pick up baggages and stuff like, does a final pickup from us, takes it back to his place. And when I go out, sometimes I go out on the way to dinner or something at whatever, seven, seven thirty, those guys are still in there. So they work like minimum 12 hours a day. And this is, we're talking seven days a week sometimes. They, they rotate, they rotate. They're on a normal salary man contract, but they work bizarre, bizarre hours. And there was quite a scandal about this a few years back that the delivery guys were being treated like absolute dirt. You don't like it, you quit, whatever. And they did now, and this is a few years, three, four, five years ago, because of the scandal, they did start to get the overtime pay and, and back pay and stuff like that. So this is now known as one of those jobs where you work like a demon and save a ton of money. You don't see your family or kids ever, but you save it up, save it up, save it up. This is sort of the, the, the image now of, of, a, of this delivery guy's job. It's a young man's game, work like a demon, have no personal life, do it for as many years as you can stand it and come out of it with a good bank account. That's sort of the image of this job now. Do the colors on the lamppost mean anything? It's all the same all the way down. It's orange, green, and white, and black, I think. I don't know of any specific meaning. I wouldn't guess so. There could be something I'm not aware of. <coughs> there are a few hidden meanings in the street decorations. It turns out that there's six trees. You can see one of them there. It's the Salisbury. We've got one in front of us. There's the little Jew that's Zakhar across the street. There's three more. There are six trees for Dok Dori. And that was the thing. The, the previous Kaicho san, the, the whale restaurant owner, he was so proud of. You counted them, right? And I'm like, what, what should I count? The trees, the trees. You counted them, right? And I'm like, I hadn't. But he said, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. He was so proud of this. <laughs> so I looked down there, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's six. And he's like, <laughs> he's a nice guy. You know? He's such a nice guy. <laughs> the top six trees of Dok Dori. <laughs> so you're asking about the colors. It's very possible they do mean something, but I, I'm not in on that secret yet, I'm sorry. So before I blow it away and say, no, they don't mean anything, I should just simply say, I don't know. I suspect not, but I don't know. There's an also, speaking about the streets and the maintenance, I have a little bit of a problem here. I'm going to, I'm going to, it's not really a problem because I'm just going to ignore it and it'll go away. So, but I have a problem and this is something, knowledge of Japan, <clears throat> the street lights here, the street lights that, that we, the merchants paid for, can you see any, if I, this is, this is too good of a story. If I pop this up a minute, okay, you can't really see any, the guy hanging on the lamppost here, look across the street behind him, you can see the post. And you can see perhaps two, there's two little metal cages at the top. So each of the street lights has two metal, square metal baskets with a, a lamp in each one. And there's, there's sort of these, these yellow sodium type lights. They're really, really super bright. And you can hear the crack, crack as the thing charges up and they get going. They're probably hugely expensive. I don't have any idea. Anyway, the one right in front of my building, there's two bulbs in each one. The one right in front of my building, one of the bulbs has died. It's, it's gone. So it's just, mine doesn't have a double anymore, mine just has a one. It doesn't matter. I look down the street, two, 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 one more down the other end, one of the bulbs has, has lost and popped. And if Dave had just been fairly new in Japan, what he would have done was, I would have gone to the, the maintenance guy, the, the, the guy who was taken over from the whale restaurant, and said, hey, just so you know, a couple of the bulbs are, a couple of the bulbs are gone. And what would have happened automatically, because Dave has complained about this, there would have been, probably within 24 hours, maybe 48 hours, 
the maintenance truck would have been here. And they don't change one bulb to a bulb. That's not the way you do it. When you're an owner of a 7-Eleven and one of those things goes down, you change them all at the same time. You can't pull your roof thing and do your changing one by one by one. When they start to go down, you throw them all away and you put new ones in for the whole thing. So I, knowing this now, I just kept quiet. One bulb is down, who cares? But it can wait. The street is not dark, there's no run crime. Once five or six or seven have gone down, everybody will start to notice. They will ring the bell and they will come in and change it. But for me to call in this, yeah, 12 guys with hard hats and three flag men, the bill would be staggering. It's, we're gonna have to pay it. But I'm keeping quiet. Because if I said, oh, by the way, that's it. Somebody has complained, and you got to do it. It's it's the it's the thing you know we I like to complain about about Japan. What Dave refers to as the as the lack of common sense. They don't see it as a lack of common sense. They see it as as doing things properly. You know, of course, if there's bulbs out, change them. Can't change them one by one. But anyway, let's just change them. It's obviously coming up. Who was that? Was that Suga-san? Dei-chan? I didn't see who popped in. I took the paper out this morning for Dei-chan because her dot was on the door, so I guess that was Dei-chan. She's printing owls. Or was it Ayana-san? Oh, it could have been Ayana-san. Watanabe-san well, is uh, teller today. She's working from home today. It's all Photoshop work for her, so there's no reason to fight the rain and come here just to sit and do Photoshop work here. She can do it quite comfortably at home. I was going to get these finished, I might not be, though I'm talking too much and not paying much attention to the work, so sorry, sorry, sorry. Hi. Oh, was that you that just went upstairs? Jail, no, okay. No. I put my girl, I don't know what I'm going to do. Ayama-san, can I? Ayama-san, can I? Okay. Good. Some say the merchant's paying for street lamps is weird. Some say the merchant's paying for street lamps is weird. This is our choice. There were city-issued uh, normal lamps here. It was a boring, quiet street. The decorations you see, the actors' faces, the new street lamps, the new paving, the wiggly sidewalks, all of this stuff was supplied for by the Rokdori Shotengai, the group of merchants who work here, uh, live here on these two blocks. And it was a, it was a, what do you call it? When different people pay into the pot to uh, cost sharing. I think, I don't know, I wasn't here because this happened before I came. I think maybe the merchants hit 50%, something like this. The city, Taitoku, would have maybe hit in 50, and maybe the prefecture, Tokyo, would have hit in 50. Something like that. I don't know the numbers. The maintenance is on the merchants. It's up to us. So the city likes this because they've got a, the city looks cleaner and neater and more beautiful. <coughs> they have to cough up some money at the beginning, but then they're out of there, and we handle all the maintenance. And every time there's a new digging, 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 it has to all be covered up again with all the tiles. Mark the Kento and zoom out a little bit. The Kento is here. We've already passed one of the registration marks. We're coming up to the next one. Hundred and fifty percent. I did I add him up wrong. I said I don't know the numbers. I thought I said fifty, twenty-five, twenty-five. What did I say? Fifty, fifty, fifty? I don't remember. I don't know the numbers. For sure, we would have paid the lion's share, and the instigation would have been from the merchants. This would have been the idea of the merchants. And it would have taken years of preparation. Permission from city planning, permission from the police department, permission from you name it. It would have taken years and years and years of planning.
and actually this sort of thing it sounds like a cool idea the city is beautified if that's a word gentrified the city has a, a nice bunch of streets here these maintenance is taken care of but that all is predicated on a healthy merchants association and here in Asaksa we're okay there's there's uh, customers all over the place these shops are healthy but it's very 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 common now all over Japan for commercial streets, and I mean, you know, shopping arcades and stuff like that, to have fallen on very hard times. Partly the pandemic, partly the depopulation. You have lots of provincial cities where the population is declining, and those wonderful central shopping streets, an arcade full of all kinds of shops and stuff like that, and half of them are shuttered, or more than half are shuttered. That's how it is out in Ome, where my home is. And now this thing becomes a white elephant and becomes a problem. So nobody is changing the lights. The merchants can't afford to do it. They can't afford to maintain it. Poles start to lean over, stuff like this. And now the city is like, hey, hey, hey. So this really, really becomes a problem. So it's all good when it's good. thunder here in Shinagawa. I don't hear anything here, but yes, it has been during the night. There's a rumble in the distance, rain stops and starts. Someone's asking, do we leave a signature on the print suite? Some we can recognize. Yes and no. On our larger prints, prints, you know, say about this large or whatever, we do emboss and we put our names on. We might put the designer's name, we would emboss the carver and printer's name on them. When the prints are quite small, there's no room for that. So we don't do that. So it's yes and no, yes and no. Sometimes we do the craftsmen's names on them, but when they're too small, that's not possible. Okay, I need just one quick second while I drop Ayano-san a mail. Nine minutes to show and tell, and I want Ayano-san to help me with show and tell here. So just one quick second while I pop her a quick email in case she doesn't come back downstairs again. Sound. For today's stream, I would, I'm typing too fast, I would like to show the people that little box that arrived the other day. Can you bring it downstairs, please? Is she going to see it inside the next five minutes? Oh, who's that? 
I missed that. Could have asked that person. <coughs> What well, another sun's not coming today. I got really lucky at the pool today, you know, it's the first time I've been now in two weeks because of this back thing. And I was really a little bit nervous about one thing, the normal pattern for me, people sort themselves out into their lanes and there's a normal group swimming. And the normal pattern for me has been, I'm in lane three swimming with this lady, I don't know her name, she comes from that door, I come from this door, we nod to each other and we swim. Lane four is faster, it's a super fast guy in there. Lane two is really, really pokey and slow and there's two or three people in there. So when I went there today, I'm thinking, what should I do? If I just get in lane three, the normally this, this lady is going to. Who is this? Oh, Sokaisa, Soka, Soka, Soka. Hi, hi, good morning, hello. Good morning. Hi. I forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, so I wasn't really sure about the speed, you know, how am I gonna handle this? Because this lady normally, you know, is about the same speed as me, but today I couldn't do this. But I was really lucky because of the super, 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 super heavy rain this morning, the pool was almost deserted. And luckily, on exactly the day I needed it, I got a lane to myself. So, uh, Thursday, what's the plan today? Is it labels and stuff, or do you know what's going on? Yeah, I, I, I imagine it'll be about the labels. Okay. Yeah. I have no idea. I've been out of touch with that stuff, so. Uh, right. Yeah, I'll just have to wait until. Yeah, okay. Else but the Watanabe son's not here today, so. Okay. Is Hosono san coming, do you know then, or, or you don't know? Um, okay. I yeah. think Hosono san should be coming. Okay, today. all right. Yeah. So she'll set you up. Yeah. This is one of the young men who are here training to get ready for when the shop opens up. Nine ten, we have five minutes left. Sakai san could get the box if I if I understand doesn't see my mail in time. What's in the box? I know. Well, we'll talk about it when it gets here, but I can give you a hint. The hint is Kintaro. Kintaro is a hint of what's in the box. Oh, this is only scratched. Uh, Sakai-san, can I ask a favor? Yes. I know, sorry to bother you about this, but uh, I'm going to start the show and tell part of our stream in a couple of minutes at 9.15. Uh -huh. And what I want to show the people today is a box that arrived yesterday from the Takumin Delivery Company. Mm -hmm. And the box, I believe it's in the, on the second floor in the room at the back where I understand is working today. Okay. It's a little box like this, mm -hmm. about that big. So can you ask Kai san to, to give it to you and, and bring it down for me here? Okay, sure. Thanks very much. Yeah.
Kintaro translations as golden boy. Somebody's confused about the paper. That paper company is called Kitaro, not Kintaro. Kitaro is the paper. Don't get confused here. Kintaro literally is golden boy. Well, it's a boy's name, actually. Not Nobody these days would call their son Kintaro. But it was a boy's name. So don't tell what's inside it, but yes, 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 No, I really regret it. We shouldn't have opened it. I know, I know. It's okay. It's okay. The point is, the best part is the box. Okay, okay. So that's actually, so the best part, like she said, the best part was the box. Give me a couple of minutes. I got to finish it. We're two minutes away. The best part is the box. And I had no choice. I had to open it. Well. Let's just do it. <laughs> thunder. I now hear it. That Shinagawa thunder is headed this way. Somebody watching the stream today, he's in Shinagawa. He, she is in Shinagawa. And he said, thunder, thunder, can you hear it? Thunder. I, I saw now. a lightning. No, but yes. just now. You hear boom. Just now. Just now? Yeah, just as you went to talk to Sakai-san. Well, no, picture. there was a thunder rumbling. You'll see, 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 see. <laughs> I mean, she's seen it. We did open it, you know. The problem with this, it's the timing, you know. We get stuff from Yahoo Auctions. They're both gone. Oh. We get stuff from Yahoo Auctions, and case by case, it depends on the setting and on how much money is involved. A lot of the auctions, the money is escrow. So the person who is delivering the goods, the seller, doesn't get paid until the receiver gets the package, opens the box. Here's the vegetable man, opens the box and then goes to the Yahoo website and checks, checks off saying, hi, received, or A-OK. -okay. And then the guy gets paid. So a lot of these things, this would have arrived probably Saturday morning while the stream was on. And I didn't even quite grok it, but, or, or Monday morning when the stream was on. And then by then I've got to open it by Tuesday to tell the guy. So I can't just hold on to it for the next stream without opening it because the guy wants to get paid. So me and ayana son we opened this yesterday upstairs, or, or two days ago, we opened this so that I could actually pay the guy. And the thing about opening it, I gotta tell you this story, we could not figure out how to open it. And she and I spent 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out how to open it. Because, for example, like this, it goes around there. So that's actually cut, this is cut, but the cardboard is full there. The cardboard is full, and the cardboard is full. So no, it doesn't open there, there's no flap there, that's glued, that cardboard is full, and there was no way to open this thing. How did the guy get it closed? And it's got marks from a box company that doesn't make any sense. There's two marks from the box company. So we just gave up. We finally got my knife in there, popped some of this, and took out a glued flap. And it turns out the person must have made flaps. They've made this box by themselves, made little flaps, and carefully glued it all together, and then put tape on it. Okay, anyway, what do we have here today? I said Kintaro. sort of talk about the packaging. And those of you who are new here, like, why are we talking about the packaging? It's, there's a thing. Sometimes the packages we receive really, really, really do have interesting packaging. This one is not so special. The person was a nice person. They made a little box for it. What have we got inside? Kintaro. Kintaro. Dave came here first to Japan in, whatever, 1979 or something, three months tour. We've talked about this in the videos. I went to a dachi, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I was trying to learn about printmaking. Somebody, it might have been the Adachi people, it might have been Yu Yu Do, it might have been some book I found in the library. There was a list of suppliers of woodblock products. Knives, it's talked about Shimizu, Shimizu Hanmono over in Akihabara. I went to Shimizu, I bought a couple of knives. They're still, actually, I've still got some of them here, whatever. 
it then mentioned, I can't remember everything, it mentioned paper go to Yamada Shokai in the Ginza. I went there, there was just a skyscraper there. It mentioned for brushes, go to Kintaro. For brushes, go to Kintaro. I get there, I get the train, the bus, whatever. I walk down the back streets, I look at this. This is pre-internet. This is 1979, 1981 of those trips. Nothing. There's a parking lot, a fairly new parking lot. I ask somebody, Ano Kintaro, Kintaro, and they just gesture, gone. The guy had died, building sold, property gone, it's a parking lot. Kintaro was the number one brush maker in the post-war period. And last week, on Yahoo Auctions, there was an auction for 14 unused, untouched, never seen by human hands. There is thunder to show. Yes. Even you guys can hear that, right? Kintaro brushes. And when Dave saw this auction, thump, 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 hands start to tremble. It wasn't just one auction. The guy put up three auctions. One auction was 14 Kintaro brushes. The next auction was 11 Hon Baren. I'll put you out of your misery right now. I didn't get those. We'll talk about it in a minute, but don't expect that's tomorrow's box. I didn't get the barons. Anyway, when I saw the auction for the Kintaro brushes, one thing I needed to know, are these old Kintaro or are these late Kintaro? Because it turns out that there's a real big difference. I didn't know it back in the day when I first came here, but bit by bit, I got my hands on some Kintaro brushes. I talked to printers about this and that. And it's, yeah, Kintaro was the best. But once the old man died and the family took over, the quality went straight down. When did that happen? Oh, mid-1970s, somewhere around there. So this auction came up, and the brushes are unused. They haven't been touched. Almost certainly they are going to be late Kintaro, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to get them upstairs with Sugasan, and we're going to try this. And we're going to try and figure it out. Anyway, they are beautiful, 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 good brushes. And the other thing is, this is not one of those auctions where Dave scored this <clears throat> 15 bucks. No, I am not the only person in town who wanted these. Not at all. The bidding went up and up and up. And then it kept going up some more. And then it went up some more. And I, at one point, said, okay, I'm out of here. I can't do this. I can't justify going up any more than this. Time goes by, click, 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 click. Two minutes left, three minutes left, away we go. And I thought, well, I can add 50 bucks more. <laughs> I broke my own rule never to do this. I added 50 bucks more into the thing. Tick, 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 tick. Bing, we got it. But, do you see the numbers there? What's the number on the auction? 76,000 yen, which in American dollars right now is about $600 for 14 brushes. Are they going to turn out to be worthwhile? At the end of the day, even if they turn out to be not the best Kintaro brushes ever, they are going to be worth that kind of money. For number one, you can no longer buy from anybody brushes of this size anymore. Not at all. Just not for lover money. Kintaro is a good brand name, and even if it's not best Kintaro, these are still. So they are worth what I paid for them. There's a date! There's a date! Okay, who can decode this? Hi! Chocolate egg, come on, get working, get working. What is that in real numbers? Can you read it? Who's got it? It's December 1979, right? Showa 54, Junigatsu. December, not Heisei. <laughs> 
It says 5412. Oh, they, I, the first one I looked at, okay, they don't all have dates. There we go. 79. So is this, I, now I don't know. I don't know when the guy died. It's just around that time. I, well, no, this must be late, 79. That must be right at the end of it, to show. I came, that day I came there, would have been 79, 80 or 81. There was a parking lot there, it was new asphalt. This must be very end then, right at the end. Maybe this is like clearance stuff. He's died and they're clearing stuff out. I don't know. But there they are, 5412. I'm avoiding opening too many of these because I was gonna have, I was gonna give it to Sugasan. She was gonna have fun opening them, but really we we should open some more. Those are three more. These are even bigger. Oh my god. They're even bigger. Ayano-san, there's some giant brushes in here. Giant brush? There's bigger ones. I thought the I thought this was the biggest one. They're not. There's bigger ones in here. Woo! That's been used. Look, look, it's water. You can see, look, look, look. It's been used and washed. You can see the water stains. It's been hung up to dry, and the water has run down from the, you know... Nails. Yeah, so these are not going to all be the same. Some of these are going to be older, and some of these are going to be newer. Look, 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 look. 53, 1977. Hmm. Does it have the date? Does it have the date? Does the used one? No. No. Someone says, Peter didn't spring for the barons. I did bid on the barons. The baron auction happened a little bit differently. The baron one was first. And of course I bid. I bid up to $2,000. And then what happened around there, we had that same pattern. Somebody jumped in to bid against me, like everybody else had dropped out by then. I was head and shoulders. Somebody jumped in and he only had a really tiny bidding history of five. And it's classic. The seller has seen somebody really wants this stuff, Dave, so he calls his friend, okay, away you go, bid this guy up. And it was clear that's what was happening. So I had no choice. I really wanted those barons. I would have happily paid 2000 for them. No. Up and up and up it went. That guy pipped me and it went. And I'm now watching this to see if that other bid has been cancelled. And this will come up again. It was, uh, I couldn't trust it. You, once the numbers go above a certain limit, you cannot trust Yahoo auctions as far as you can throw them. It's a cesspit, an absolute cesspit. And do we use wide brushes? Yes, 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 yes. We're not going to use these on the match label prints, but we are going to use them, absolutely. Still excavating. Unused. So it looks like we've got two groups here. Most of them have that same date, and the ones with that date seem unused. Some of the other ones have a little bit of rust, and they have either no date or an earlier date. Akasaka-san, good morning, hello. Sashiburi desu. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead. Good morning. And we have some chibis, all Kintaro. So it looks like all a group, ne? Interesting. So, so far, I've only seen two of them that show any sign of use. But they're clearly from a professional workshop because that baron auction from the same seller had like 11 professional barons. Now there's nobody who has 11 professional barons who doesn't have 50, 60, 70, 80 brushes. So I don't know where the rest of the stuff is. This is presumably one group from the stash that this guy had. Either they were on a separate auction and I missed it or or he hasn't put them out yet. 
Someone's asking, have they been feathered? No, they are not. They are coarse and rough. That's rough. This is as it comes from the maker. This has not been dressed from the shark skin. That one seems a little better. This one is soft hair. No, it's still coarse. It hasn't been dressed. We're touch and go here. So these are, oh, that's really coarse. That looks like a shoe brush. My God. And that's the one that's been used. Doesn't add up, you know. The barons were well used, totally professional home barons, a real professional printer or printer's workshop. And these brushes, although they are professional brushes, don't, they look like the extra stuff that would have been on a shelf somewhere, an extra box full of brushes, not the main brushes that were in use in the workshop. The other dangerous thing with these, before everybody really, really, really jumps up and down, hallelujah, these brushes are 40 plus years old, 40, 45 years old. They haven't seen water, they haven't been touched, they haven't been dressed, nothing's been done to them. This hair is fragile. Normally, a brush wouldn't even last 40 years. You do it, you dress it, you start using it, they wear down a bit, you start using it some more, they wear down, you dress it, you start using it. A brush is not normally even gonna last 40 years. It's quite possible that as we start to put these into use, we'll put some water in, wash it, get it on the shark skin, start to dress it, and almost certainly the first thing we're gonna see is shedding like you've never seen shedding before. The hair up in there is fragile. I guess these are gonna be useful, but I don't think they are going to be the, oh my God, drop dead treasure of a lifetime useful. I don't think so. 45 years is a long time for, for hair to sit there without being used and moistened and flexed and dried and used. Someone said they need some conditioner, and I'm not quite sure. They don't seem fragile. They do seem light. We'll take it easy at first. We'll try a couple of them, dressing them. And maybe I'm overly worried. I do have other Kintaro brushes in my, in my workshop here, and they've been in use for that long, but they've been in use. It's when you leave something sit and let it dry out. Anyway, we'll see. I will report back on how this has turned out. And I've got my fingers crossed that the Baron auction that went a funny way, the guy will put it back up and we'll see how they go. No idea. 11 beautiful old home bottom. There was a third auction by the same guy for a bunch of Mizubake, water brushes, but they were cracked and dried, and you can see the hair falling out. They were gone. It would have been nice to have as a historical uh, record to look at how they were made, but they were totally, completely unusable. And that also started to climb. I kept out of it. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks very much for watching. It's not, not a very interesting printing show and tell today, print making show and tell, but it is something very important to us. I'll report back in whatever weeks and months. Ask me again, jog me how these brushes turned out, and I'll report what Sugasan found out as she tries them. Okay, today's Thursday. Saturday, now because I am finished this block now, I will be doing color separations today and tomorrow. I will. Well, we will either be pasting down some color separations or we will be carving color blocks. See how it goes. See you on Saturday morning. And look at this, I've been sitting here for 90 minutes and my back is actually not complaining. Be careful when I stand up. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Thank you very much, guys. Let's pop up the outside. The thunderstorms seem to be, you know, just all over the place. Short, small-scale thunderstorms here and there, here and there. <laughs> Rainy day in Asakusa. Okay, guys, thanks for the support. Thank you very much for hanging around, being part of the conversation here, part of the community. See you again in a couple of days. Thank you very much.